Hi everyone, Evan Alexander here with another Vectorworks 3D Basics tutorial. Today we're going to talk about Extrude Along Path, one of my personal favorites. I know I say that about all of them. Um, let's get started. Let's just jump right in. I'm in Vectorworks 2019 and I've just drawn some simple shapes here. I've drawn this polyline, this nice kind of curve, S-curve and just a regular rectangle. I'm in top plan view here, nothing fancy. And the idea is, if you think about this in terms of molding then, or picture frames, then it will kind of make sense where you have one object that's your profile, your molding, and you have another object which is called your path, which is basically where that molding is going to run. And so much like uh, if you had the Play-Doh kind of fun factory when you were a kid and you squeezed out those like kind of long extruded shapes. This is going to be pretty much do the same thing. It's a, a very expensive virtual pasta maker. So I'm going to select both of these objects. Uh, this is just a polyline. It has its fill turned on. I can turn it off because really all we want is the line. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect you either way, but we'll keep it nice and tidy. So I'm going to select both of these objects and we're going to say model extrude along path and when I do this a dialog box is going to pop up and basically Vectorworks is trying to understand which object is the path so whichever object is highlighted in red that is going to be your path the other object will be the profile that gets pulled along that form there are some other options here we'll come back and talk about these later right now this is just kind of the default setting don't worry about those yet. Um, if this uh, this guessed here and it, it came up with this as the path, so that's great. If it had guessed wrong, you can just use these next and previous buttons to kind of cycle through uh, which object it is. So remember, the red is the path. And so when I say OK, it's going to go ahead, thank you, and uh, pull that shape along this profile. Let's take a look here if we rotate around, pop into OpenGL. So you can see, here we go, we have this nice 3D noodle. Um, pretty simple, but uh, you know you can see kind of what the process is. So similar to the extrude, all of these objects that you create, you can see it's become an extrude along path object. These are parametric. So you can go back now and adjust either the path or the profile. It's retaining the history of the creation of this object within itself, which is really handy for us. So just like any other editing mode, we want to double click on the object. So I'm going to double click. And now you have to make a choice. It, it, you can only edit one of these at a time. So you have to know which one you want to update. So let's start by editing the path. So I'm going to say OK, and it's going to take me back. We'll switch here to top plan view. It's going to take me back to our original curve. Now, it, it looks exactly the same, but it, it has actually been modified in this process, which is too bad, but not a real deal breaker. If you notice, this has now been turned into a NURBS curve. It was a polyline when we started, and that's OK. Um, you could actually draw this as a NURBS curve right from the beginning if you wanted to. So uh, I can come in here and just like any other NURB, I can edit this. So let's say that we uh, kind of swing this around and we change it up to be this way. Maybe we'll pull this out. So instead of an S, it's kind of more of a big C shape. And now when I exit the path, you can see that this has updated itself just perfectly. If uh, Let's go back in here. I'll double click and choose path and say OK. Now, if if this is just the, the changes you need are too great and that you can't really edit the NURBS curve to do what you want or you've never worked with NURBS and you're scared and confused, that's OK. You do have the option here of taking this and just tossing the whole thing out. And then we can come back in here and you can draw a whole new profile and when you exit the path. So 
don't fret. You don't have to start over if you want to do a big radical change. That's more than just a slight edit. Um, so that's great. And now let's take a look at uh, updating our profile. So now I'm back here. And uh, so here we are. And so this is just 2D. I'm back in top plan view looking at my original 2D. And so we can now come in here and edit this just like any other 2D object. Let's clip surface here and we'll knock a nice little kind of round over into this. Uh, maybe we'll add, let's go back to circle here. Let's add a little circle here and we'll grab both of these and say add surface. And uh, I don't know what else we could uh, fill it the edge here. So let's grab this and we'll just round over this profile. Great. So now we have something that looks like bad molding. And so when I exit the profile, so you can see here that this has updated itself. So that's great. Now, um, so that's good. And this pretty much does a lot of, of what we want to do. There are other things to know about this and other things that you can do and work with this to manipulate it. Let's set up another quick real world example here and, uh, and then I think that will help us kind of see what we're doing. So I'm gonna take this and get rid of it. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool here. Let's just draw out a wall. We'll make it 20 feet long and uh, I'm gonna go 24 inches deep. It's pretty thick for a wall, but I think it will be helpful for us to see what we're doing here. Command E to extrude, we'll go up 10 feet. And so now we've just built a really basic wall. And let's say the task at hand here is to you know, put a cornice around this uh, piece of scenery here. So, okay, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna draw our path. So I'm gonna go back. This time I'm gonna use the polygon tool. That seems okay. Um, we're just going to do straight. There's no curves on this. And so I'm just in top plan view and I'm just going to click and draw out this object here. Double click to finish it. Now again, I don't need the fill so I can turn that off just because it's getting in my way. And I'll even uh, see, I'll make this uh, red. So hopefully we can kind of see it a little better. So you can see now here that we've got our wall and then running on the ground along the base here is our cornice. So uh, yes, we want our cornice to be at the top of the wall, but that's okay. For right now, uh, I, I tend to just draw the thing and then adjust it and fine tune it in place. And you'll, you'll see that. Um, there are other ways to kind of get it to land in the sweet spot right out of the gate. Uh, I, I just prefer to kind of get something down and then fix it, so. That's pretty much my general philosophy with vector works in general. If I'm drawing a rectangle, just draw a rectangle and then dial in the size. So same thing here. So now uh, we've got our path kind of laid out. So it's hugging our wall, which will be nice. And um, so let's draw our profile. And so this is where you would actually, you know, look at a real piece of molding and uh, not do what I'm about to do which is what every set design professor I ever had told me not to do, which is please don't make up moldings. Uh, these shapes have been worked out, you know, thousands of years ago, uh, OG and round over, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta just do what you wanna do. So here we are, here's our fabulous molding. Isn't it great? All my professors are rolling their eyes right now. At me, we'll come back in, we'll just clean this up. I'm not gonna go crazy. There it is, it's a beautiful thing. We'll say add surface. Maybe we'll just add one more little detail here. Great, all right, I love it. It's absolutely the best. It's massive too. So <laughs> compared to this wall, it's gonna be big, but that's okay. I want it to be kind of oversized so that you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab the path. Make sure you grab the path and not the wall. I know that I have it. I can see my color changed red here. So I know that I have it selected. So there's the two of them. That's fine. Doesn't really matter what view we're in here. We'll do this in an isometric view. And I'm gonna say model. 
screw the long path. And right, it's going to ask me now which one is the path. That's correct. And we're going to say, OK. And here we are. So we have our cornice. Let's, you know, go to the after party. We're done. No. All right. There's a few problems here. So number one, obviously, it's in the ground. But it's, it's not even actually sitting on the ground. It's actually sitting kind of sunk into the ground. It's not lined up with the bottom of the wall. And if we look in top plan view here, you can see that it's not actually, let's see if I can select it. That is our wall object. And you can see that the molding is overlapping. So what exactly is going on here, okay? Well, this is the important thing to understand. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to edit my profile and say, okay, when you are building this stuff out, right? Here's our molding. When you're building this stuff out and you s run the command, Vectorworks has to choose which point of your profile is it supposed to basically run uh, along the path, uh, kind of like a symbol. What's its insertion point, right? And it doesn't know. It doesn't know that you're making molding and a cornice in a room for a period set. It, it just knows, you know, I have zeros and ones here. So by default, what it does is it centers your profile on the path, which is logical. So in this edited envelope here, inside the profile editing, the green and the red axes uh, are showing you center. So right here, this it says locus, this right center point, that is the part that is going to extrude along your path. And so that's why it is half sunk into the floor and kind of half sunk into the wall. So we can manipulate this. So for example, if I were to just move this so that this back upper corner is on the center point. That's great because we want this point to be where our path is and our path is like hugging the wall perfectly. And so if we exit the profile now, you can see that, so we've taken care of this, here's our extrude, and now our molding is sitting, you know, nice and kind of where we want it. Let's take a look here. I'm gonna switch from orthogonal to normal perspective just so we can get a slightly better view of this here. And so you can see that now this is sitting kind of right where we want it in, you know, in space. It, it is now still sunk into the ground, but that is an easy fix. So let's go back to orthogonal. And I'm going to just, uh, well, you have a few options here, but I, I'm just going to grab it and just snap, slide it up. And here you go. You've got your profile. That's great. So another thing to note about this is that sometimes when you do this, uh, depending on which way you draw it, uh, you know, let's say this was your original draw, sometimes you might run the command and find that, oh, my, <laughs> my molding is facing the wrong way. It's facing in. Uh, that's okay. We can fix that. So I'm going to go in and edit my profile. Uh, where are we? Here we are. So all I'm doing here is uh, flipping this. Uh, where is it? Under rotate, flip horizontal, flip vertical. There's shortcuts for this. So we know if we flip this around now, this is the way that it's going to be facing. And I slid it around before, but we know that we want this to line up here. And we can exit the profile. And now we're sitting pretty with this massive cornice <laughs> on this little tiny wall, but that's okay. Just as a quick side note here, which is important to note, if you were to uh, say now want to add a baseboard to this same wall, you can save yourself a little time. Uh, this is a really simple example, but if you're working on a complicated room where you're, you know, maybe you're drawing this really kind of a hexagonal complicated shape. You don't have to start over from scratch every time. What you can do here is grab this. I'm going to hit, um, let's see, I'm going to hit Command-D. I'm going to duplicate it. 
And let's go ahead and just move this down. And uh, I'm gonna line it up here, unfortunately. Uh, I did know that, and I don't care right now. I'm gonna just line this up with the bottom. Bloop. And if I double click this and edit the profile yet again, so we know that this point right here is where our, uh, our path is. So we can just eliminate this, and now you can draw your baseboard. So let's start here. Let's just do something really dumb and simple. Here, we'll grab the arc tool and uh, we'll put a little shoe on here. And we'll combine these, add surface, and I don't know. Let's, uh, here, we'll just notch a little bit out of the top here, making this up as we go. And now I exit. Now, my spacing is off. That is a very large baseboard. Wow. But you get the idea. And so, you know, you don't have to kind of start over and redraw that path every time. So that is handy. Okay. So there you go. So you're in. Pretty basic, right? Let's keep this example here. We'll pull this off to the side for a second. And let's go back here within extrude along path. We can go back to our kind of our first example here. And we will say, oops, I'm right clicking model, extrude along path. So it's set up by default to uniform scale. So meaning as it pulls along, it is going to remain you know, at the same size. So um, you can play around with this. Uh, it's pretty rare that I do this. Um, if you want to kind of taper this along, there are probably other ways to build that geometry. But um, this is assuming that one is 100%. So if I were to say scale 0.5, what should happen is it'll start out full size. And then as it pulls along, it'll shrink down and it will end up then at uh, half of its kind of normal size. So you can, you know, start to do these kind of tapered extrudes. Um, again, I don't really do that very often, but uh, just know, you know, know that you can do that. Let's undo. Let's get back here. Um, now, I, I, so that's part of it, of that dialog box. Let's come back to our wall here for a second. Come into a nice isometric. I'm going to get rid of this... Uh, baseboard here and I'll just draw out a new base. I know I said before you don't have to, but this will be easier just I'm just doing it right here in perspective even. And we don't need this. Whoops, turn that off and uh, here we'll make this fluorescent green just so we can kind of see it. And um, so we were talking before about just drawing it and then manipulating it to get it into space. And I, I still do that. I do that for most everything. Um, but you can set up the relationship between the profile and the path right from the get-go if you want. So let's, uh, let's just take a look at that. So for example, if I come into a true front view here, so now let's say I'm gonna draw my baseboard uh, right here. And uh, we've got, whoops, let's make sure we're in screen plane here. And uh, so we'll pull up, whoops, what's going on? Here we go. All right. We will pull up a rectangle. Uh, Vectorworks is freaking out on me here a little bit. And uh, this, so let's see. Oh, I think I'm probably just zoomed like way in. This is one by one, which is not what we want. So let's say we want it to be eight inches tall and uh, I don't know, half an inch thick. And then we'll just, we'll do what we did before here. We'll just add a little shoe, a little 90 degree, add surface. Make sure, by the way, notice how when I did this, this is kind of open here, because this was an arc, not a, an actual polygon. And so I've ended up with this open shape here, which is, uh, which is not great. So I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna check closed. 
and that's going to close that shape down for me. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, be careful when you start using arcs for 3D. You got to make sure that you're actually closing that shape down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's grab these and do a quick clip surface. So here we're basically back to where we were. All right. And if we look at this now, so this is front view. If we look at this in an isometric view, you can see whoop, this thing, because it's in screen plane, is like way the heck over here. So let's move this. Let's go into plan view. And uh, oh, I've lost it. It's over here. It's in screen plane. So maybe, I don't know, because I'm in screen plane, it's totally possible that I have screwed this up. It certainly looks like I have. But let's see if we can get this sitting kind of right where we want it to be. So let's set this to working plane and see, yes, okay. So now it's kind of respecting where we are in space. So I apologize, this is probably not a great example, but what I'm trying to do, yes, okay, so this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the baseboard to basically sit right where we want it to start. So I have this you know, now the plane here is in 3D. And as I said in, in the extrude tutorial, I think we need to have a separate conversation about screen plane versus layer plane versus screen aligned versus 3D. It's very confusing. Thank you, Vectorworks. But <clears throat> um, in, as, as far as extrude along path goes, I have my profile and I have my path and they are sitting exactly where I want them to be. So I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to say model extrude along path. And this is the path. But this time I'm going to check this um, fix profile. And what that's going to do is that is going to lock in the relationship between the profile and this path right from creation. So instead of guessing and defaulting to the center of this profile, I have now said, no, no, this relationship is locked in and this is what it should be and when we run the command now what it's done is it's actually drawn this baseboard exactly where we need it to be so that's great so that's really handy i do that never <laughs> i want you to know that it's there but i think it's okay especially when you're starting out to just kind of get used to it to uh to just draw stuff out and then go back and and fix it I find the more that you can do in top plan view and then kind of tweak it and modify it, uh, the better it, it can be. I, I'm sure there are other people who are rolling their eyes right now saying, you know, why would you do it that way? But this is the way I've always done it. And like I say, I, I like to keep things simple and, uh, and keep them working that way. Um, so that's the kind of basic idea of extrude along path. Uh, so. You know, it's really handy. And so when you get into things like moldings and baseboards and door casements and, uh, you know, stuff like that, this is, you know, really, really handy. And, and because it's all parametric, it's great. So if you're, you know, if your art director comes back to you and says, hey, we're, you know, we're swapping out. That molding was out of stock. And so, you know, we have a new one. Um, you know, you can just eliminate this. Uh, maybe I'll just draw right over this and say, okay, well, this is going to be our new, our new profile now is just going to be this uh, kind of, I don't know, another funky piece of molding here. Great. So I'm going to grab one, two, three, four and add surface. So that we could take the old one here now in the background and say bye-bye. And so now we've put in our new piece of molding. And uh, when we exit here, you should see if I did this right, that yes, in fact, our new profile has dropped in there. So it's great. Once you have it set up on a wall, changing stuff out, you know, really simple. So um, you can, in the extrude video, we used a lot of add solid, subtract solid to modify this stuff. And that will work for these objects as well. So, for example, if we want to uh, put a door opening in this wall here, so I can, uh, let's say, make this 36 wide. I'm not thinking about it too much. I'm going to extrude this just seven feet. 
And uh, so you can see that I can grab this and I'm going to grab, so both these extrudes, the wall and this cutting tool, and I will say model uh, subtract solids. This time I'm going to check this retain subtracting object. So this is going to cut out of the wall, which is highlighted in red, and that's great. Um, but instead of kind of sucking up the cutting tool, it's going to leave it right there, which is great. So you can see it did actually cut the hole, but I didn't cut through the molding, and that's why I kept this there. So I can reuse this cutting tool now, and I can select this baseboard, and same thing. I'm going to say model, subtract solid. This time I won't retain my subtracting object, my cutting tool, and I'm going to say OK and now I've cut into this. So this is now changed to a solid subtraction. And, you know, architecturally speaking, in reality, if you had a door opening, this would probably wrap in here. So, you know, cut your doors before you put the molding on, I think. But, um, but just know that you can manipulate these objects just like anything else. And it's parametric. So if I double click this, it's going to take me back to this extrude and this extrude along path. And if I double click this, I can edit this now still just like any just like any other extrude along path that we were working on before. So I can come in here and uh, you know we can manipulate this object to our heart's desire. There you go. And when we exit, now this has been updated to this insanely weird piece of molding. And we exit again. So, you know, that stuff works as expected within Vectorworks, which is great. Um, I want to I wanna just show you one more thing here with Extrude Along Path because uh, it, it's great for moldings, and I use it for that a lot. But um, I also use it when I'm building out some larger structures, specifically stadiums and arenas. Um, Let's take a look here at this uh, just quick ground plan of this stadium. Um, so this is, uh, oh, I can't even remember. This is the U.S. Bank Stadium, I think. And um, it's, it's going to, I've taken the time here. This is just the ground plan, which has been cleaned up from the architectural drawings I have. I have a section as well. Um, but the basic idea is that we're going to build this in quadrants and so i'm going to build one quarter of it and then i'm going to flip that and then i'm going to take those and i'm going to mirror them again now it's slightly different here but that's okay because what we'll do is we'll build this part we'll flip it all around and then we'll start kind of cutting into it and you know adding bombs and all of that i'm going to do i think a tutorial series later that talks about specifically building these kinds of venues and structures um, so I don't want to go too deep down that rabbit hole, but I do want to show you how the process starts here, which is, you know, building this kind of complicated layer system of bleachers um, in using extrude along path. When I started, I would do kind of what you would think is I would draw, you know, a clean polygon for this first row and extrude it up to whatever that height was. And then I would draw a clean polygon for this and extrude and draw and draw and draw and do it all in plan and extrude these things up. But I think there's a better and kind of faster way to do it. So um, you can see here, you can kind of see where we're, where we're going to go with this. So let's just take a quick look at, at this. It's really simple, um, but you can see that this becomes kind of the starting point now for how we're going to, you know, get started. We haven't added any bombs or stairs, railings, um, you know, concession stands, suites, any of that stuff. Uh, you know, bomb tunnel entrances, hockey rinks, whatever it is that you're adding into this. But this is, you know, kind of the starting place. And so what I do is I go to the section and I trace off as clean as possible a nice good kind of section profile of the whole venue so you know you have to make some choices here obviously the whole venue goes deeper with tunnels and concessions and bathrooms and elevators and escalators but we, we don't need all of that right because we're just going to do the show inside so we just need this kind of shell so this is kind of what i ended up with this cleaned up version and then i have a path here which is just, you know, basically drawn from the ground plan. So if we come back here, whoops, excuse me. 
if we come back here so basically what I've done here is I've traced off this kind of front edge where like the hockey dasher would be for uh, just one quarter of it and this is assuming that the space is symmetrical if your space is not symmetrical you're gonna have to build these as kind of more customized pieces but um, anyway for another day so I have these two components I have this really large section and I have this path so just like everything else I'm gonna grab both of these I'm gonna say model extrude along path now this time it guessed wrong so uh, if you ran the command now it would try to run this curved line all around this profile and you would you know basically end up with probably like a Frank Gehry building um, but that's not what we want so I'm gonna hit next just to change so this is our path and uh, I haven't fixed the profile here so when we know that when I first run the command it's going to be wrong it is going to run from you know wherever the center point of this profile is and so that's not right because what I've drawn is this kind of you know front downstage first row exit but that's okay let's run the command then we'll fix it so I'm gonna say okay uh, uh oh and now we get a failure what have I done wrong I've got a polygon and a polyline I'm gonna click these two model extrude along path oh because I had fixed profile checked from the last it always remembers what you did last so that's good it happens to me it's gonna happen to you there you go uncheck that and hopefully now we should be in business so it's thinking yes all right so it's drawn the profile um, you can see it looks a little different it's kind of stumpy um, and that's because again it's extruding from the center point of this profile and so you know you end up with this really weird kind of corner and the radius is tight you can just see from the ground plan that things are not you know kind of lining up here that's okay we're gonna double click on this we're gonna go into our profile and yeah sure enough this point right here in space is what's you know following our path in plan and that's not right we know that it's the bottom edge of the downstage part the front row here and so literally by just moving this profile and snapping it over to here which is right so that edge is right there and we exit the profile again and that should be if we line these up yeah there you go that should be nice all right so the point is that you can use extrude along path not just for these small shapes but sometimes for these really large kind of more architectural pieces as well and then you know from here I would go in and start really working out you know doing solid subtractions for bombs building up railings stairs you know all the other kind of detail but it always for me kind of starts out this way I do this a lot for theaters too that have you know curving balconies or if uh, if the house seats have kind of radial you know stepped ramps um, sweep is is great you know I tend to kind of uh, or sorry extrude along path is great I tend to, to to run it kind of long and then trim down to fit so there you go that in a nutshell is autosave no that's extrude along path um, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll do one more of these basic series on sweep coming up. Look for that soon. Thanks for checking in, and I'll see you soon.